Hey everybody, welcome to this video. If you're here to learn the top 10 algorithms or algorithmic techniques for coding interviews, check out the first part of the video, top five algorithm techniques on Tech Leads channel. Yep. Okay, so number six was reversing a linked list, which is kind of funny because reversing a linked list is sort of like almost an inside joke on your channel. It's this very like contrived algorithm but it's actually surprisingly important because it's got a lot of applications and different problems. It can be sort of like hidden in problems and it's quite tricky to implement. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I think that you get a whole class of problems surrounding linked lists, even though in real life you don't use them so much. An alternative version is detecting whether there is a cycle in the linked list, right? Whether it loops back to the beginning. You know, another could be determining whether there are duplicates in the linked list. Uh, removing duplicates in the linked list. So this really just all has to do with pointer traversal and going through the linked list data structure. And this is something that you really have to know. I think that I get asked this question also on every single interview cycle loop that I go through. And the, the tricky part about that is that, because we were just talking about pointers and manipulating pointers, when you reverse a linked list, I think you have to use three different pointers, right? which is just like, it's a lot. You know, if you're, if you're not prepared for that and you're in an interview setting, you might start to really stress out, like, am I, am I overwriting the correct pointers and all that? So it's just good to like practice it and really understand it. Yeah, practice that in real life because it sounds simple. It sounds like something that you may be able to do, but once you've tried to write it down, it's much trickier than you may imagine. And the other portion is, to understand how to create the class, right? You have to create a class with a node and maybe even additional data structures and pointers, uh, the payload for that linked list inside there. So what you're saying here, uh, Tech Lead, if I'm understanding correctly, is that even an ex-Google Tech Lead like yourself with years of experience can sometimes struggle with reversing a linked list. No, I've got that down because I'm the ex-Google Tech Lead. Unlike other people like, like you, for example. Well, no, because I'm, I'm the algo expert, so I've got that covered too. But maybe like other engineers have like a lot of trouble with or it. Like those guys over, like yeah, you guys over exactly. there, yeah. All right, moving on to number seven. Um, number seven is sorting fundamentals. So understanding sorting algorithms at a sort of fundamental level is important. It doesn't mean that you necessarily need to uh, memorize how quick sort, merge sort, heap sort work. Right? In fact, I would never advocate memorizing how these algorithms work, but understanding the sort of general concepts behind them and why, let's say, an algorithm like quick sort or merge sort fundamentally is a faster, superior algorithm to one like bubble sort is really important. And you might actually even get questions in an interview where you can use maybe the quick sort or merge sort technique for the algorithm. So what do you think? Have you ever had an instance where a sorting algorithm or like a sorting technique popped up in an interview? So I've never actually been asked to implement a actual sort, right? Right. It's not like people want you to go implement quick sort or insertion sort, but people are always asking me to, for example, know the runtime of a sort, right? right? Or they may give me something that's already sorted and then I need to be able to use that properly and understand the difference between the runtime of say something that's sorted and unsorted, right? right? Sorting takes how long? What's that time space complexity? And log in time for like an optimal sorting algorithm like quick sort and merge sort in the average case. Right, so big O of n log n, that is a great number to remember for sorting time algorithms. Yeah, exactly. And I would say the reason it's, it's really important, like Tech Lead said, is not necessarily because you'll have to implement the sorting algorithm, but sometimes you're gonna sort an array, for instance, of values in an algorithm, right? And you'll use maybe like a native sorting function in your language, but knowing whether that n log n uh, time complexity of the sort affects your overall algorithm is really important. Like if your overall algorithm runs in n squared, then and n squared time, then that sort is fine. If your overall algorithm runs in O of n time, then the sorting algorithm actually just made that worse, right? So that's kind of important to know. Oh yeah, that's right. Oftentimes I'll see algorithms in which people say, well, let's first sort this and then let's go through a second pass to process that. Right. But if you knew that your sort already ballooned your time space complexity to n log n, then that's going to affect that overall runtime, maybe maybe your algorithm is not running in say linear time anymore, it's uh, n log n time. Exactly, so that's something to really uh, take note of. 
All right, and that brings us to number eight. Yeah, number eight is gonna be recursion. So recursion is that topic that every engineer sort of uh, either hates or loves. The main reason a lot of engineers hate it is because you rarely see it in like production code, right? You rarely see a recursive technique used when building, let's say, an app. Right, it would be pretty cool and fun if I saw something recursive in an app. Exactly, but yet it's still used or tested a lot in interviews. And I think the reason it is, is because first of all, recursion just lends itself really well to certain algorithms, but it's also a very, and this is of course debatable, but it's a very good indicator of like your problem solving skills, your understanding of, of like fundamental coding, right? You, and it typically requires use of like data structures and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's just one of the most trickier parts of coding, right? It's not that practical necessarily. Like you do see it here and there. Really, it's just one of the more difficult portions. And then people don't have anything better to ask you. So they just say, well, let's just throw in some recursive problem and see if you can get that. Exactly. And I would say that like, it is probably not too inaccurate to say that you're likely to have at least a couple of problems that might have a recursive solution to them in an interview. So being very familiar with recursion and just how it works is gonna be important. Yeah, and I might mention here that usually when you see the solution for a recursive problem, it looks so simple, it looks elegant, and you think, of course, that looks so good. And you think, of course, I could do that. But when you're asked to solve a recursive problem on a whiteboard setting and you have to write it by hand and you're under high time pressure, that complexity may start to trip you up. So I think that the key to this is you have to get a lot of practice in writing recursion and making sure that your code looks elegant. I think it's especially tricky to separate out that recursive algorithm into the two parts. One is what you do at every single iteration, right? What are your cases for ending that recursion? And then the other portion is the recursive cause that you're going to be making. Right. And if you don't get these right, then your algorithm is going to start looking very messy. You're going to be having if checks at every iteration, and you're going to be maybe even duplicating those conditionals in the recursive cause as well. This is where the practice comes in, right? You often see these super elegant recursive solutions, maybe one-liners that, that TechLead was sort of mentioning here. But sometimes you have to practice writing them out in their sort of, you know, grosser way, and then being able to, in an interview setting, sort of condense them, clean them up into something that's more elegant, but all the while still readable, right? And eliminate some of those like extra, like unnecessary checks that you might be doing that are sort of captured in the recursion already. Now, how might we learn more about recursion and get better practice on this? I think the best way is to practice. And so here I'm definitely gonna plug in algoexpert.io, which is the website that I've co-founded where we have currently 70 curated interview questions with a bunch of uh, you know popular like problems and algorithmic techniques like recursion. We um, have a whole category on recursion, in fact. Exactly, we have like, I think right now five questions on recursion. And the funny thing here is that because recursion is so widespread and sort of actually like spills into a bunch of ad other categories, you'll notice if you go on Algo Expert and use the product that a bunch of the questions that aren't in the recursion category still do end up using recursion. For instance, depth first search. You can implement depth first search recursively, right? And that question we've bucketed under the sort of graph category. But check out algoexpert.io uh, if you want to ace your, your coding interviews. Nice. What is the ninth top algorithm that we've got to know? So this one isn't really uh, an algorithm again. It's more uh, knowing how to construct custom data structures that you might need in an algorithm. And the one that comes to mind for me is knowing how to construct a sort of suffix tree-like data structure where you kind of want to, let's say, capture a bunch of strings in a data structure, right? And you want to start with like the first letter of a string. And then you want to say like, are there strings? Let's say there's a, there are multiple strings that start with the letter S. You put S in your data structure. How many strings have the second letter? That's the letter T. Then you put that. And the third letter is the letter R, right? Knowing how to construct these kinds of data structures in an interview is super important. Yeah, I would also mention, I think like object-oriented programming right. occasionally comes up in interviews. I know there's an interview question where it's something like you have a gumball machine and 
it can randomly give you a pill and inside the pill there's a certain color or something like that so and with the key to this was you had to use object-oriented programming and then you construct the object in which you can call a method which gives you some random result or something like that and just that proper encapsulation the abstraction of these objects makes the solution far more simpler than if you were to try to tackle this without first constructing the proper data structures. Right, so the idea is not necessarily constructing a data structure, but being able to construct a class that, ha that might be a data structure that will allow you to solve the problem well. And like you said, kind of sometimes encapsulating logic in a class method rather than like in your main method, right? In a for loop or something. Yeah, and so I think it's interesting that not every question is purely algorithm focused, right? We've seen that some questions are really more on coding, just manipulating pointers. Right. And then this sort of question is really just focused on that data structure or class you're going to have to construct. And then the algorithm itself, it may not necessarily be too complicated there. So Tech Lead, I think that we're now at number 10. The tenth and final uh, algorithm uh, that's really good to know in interviews. That's, that's right. The number one top algorithm that you have to know when you go into your interview. Uh, yes, and that's going to be binary search. Binary search is kind of that. It's quite simple once you get it, but it's really fundamental. Like you don't want to be the person who enters an interview that asks a question related to binary search and you don't know how to implement binary search. Yeah, I've been asked binary search a number of times in my interviews and they just seem to be something that come up time and time again. Exactly. You've got to know it. How does binary search work? So binary search is something that you often use like in real life. Let's say you've got a, a sorted list of integers and you want to find an integer. You look at the middle one and you say, hey, is my integer bigger than this number or is it smaller? If it's smaller, then you know that you don't have to look at any of the bigger numbers anymore. So you can kind of eliminate half of the array. And then you keep doing that sort of iteratively or even recursively um, on the subarrays, right, that you don't eliminate and you finally find the number. Yeah, for example, a real life practical application is if you have a bunch of versions of apps and you want to find out which version a crash was introduced, yeah. you can do binary search to check each version, see if it's bad or good. And at some point, you'll be able to find out at which version it went from being good to having a bunch of crashes. Exactly. And I want to add one point here because you just reminded me of this. You know, oftentimes, you're not going to get in an interview, implement binary search. However, you might get a question that ends up being implement binary search, but that's hidden behind like, find the most, you know, the, the crash uh, version of an app, or like you've got a bunch of git commits and find a particular commit that had some kind of bug in it. And it's like, it's a very tricky thing because at first you don't think of binary search, but it ends up just being that. So it's important to know that algorithm, right? And it's important to sort of familiarize yourself with the situations where it might come up. And what is the time-space complexity of binary search? So the, the time complexity of binary search is log of n, and it's really important to kind of understand why that is, right? To understand that at every step, you are eliminating half of whatever input you have, right? You eliminate the, the greater half, then you re-eliminate, let's say, the smaller half of the remaining numbers, and so on and so forth, and that's why you get to log of n. I might mention that I think quicksort also functions very similar to binary search, right? Where, so quicksort is a sorting algorithm. You usually pick one random number and you set that as the pivot. And then that ideally divides your array into say half. And then you take a look at that half and you redo that. Right, because you're bucketing, you're basically saying you've got that pivot and you put all the numbers that are greater than the pivot, let's say to the right of it and all the ones that are smaller to the, to the left. And then it's sort of like, yeah, you're, you're dividing ideally by half every time. So it functions in a sort of similar way. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up. Tech Lead, thanks for joining me here to cover these 10 most important algorithms in coding interviews. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is my place after all. Yeah, awesome place. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll see you in the next video. See you.